Greetings everyone! Hello and welcome back once more to Victoria 3 on my channel here. The big update 1.5 is out and I've been waiting for this update for quite some time now and finally it is upon us. It has been released and it is massive. It is really adding a lot of new features to the game and it is also overhauling existing mechanics such as the war system, the military system, that gets a complete overhaul with new war mechanics, with new detailed graphics that you can see on the map. We also get new economic mechanics like the companies that I'm particularly excited about because with that you can now found companies for specialized industries that give you new bonuses that you haven't seen yet so far. Along with that the pollution system is overhauled such as also new productions and new buildings that come with it. So a lot of new things to get excited about this game and I want to try it out. Also for you the game is free to play right now on Steam from November 16th to 20th. So if you want to try it out, have a look at the link in the video description to play it free to play right now. So test it for yourself if you want to try it out this amazing game. This is a sponsored video by Paradex and I would like to start with you a new nation and yeah, explore the new mechanics that this game offers. For that, we are going to start a new game right away and this time we are going to play as Japan. Somewhere all the way over there we have Japan. I haven't played this one yet and I'm really interested in this uh, country. We are of course going to play as the Iron Man once more. So we cannot make our own saves. It's always saved automatically with one slot. So every mistake we do, everything basically has consequences. Um, and with that we are yeah diving into the Shogunate of 813, 1836. And with that, scoodly do. let's get cracking. Yeah, and there it is, in all its glory, the beautiful Japanese peninsula, or island, not peninsula, it's an island really. And over here we are now, really on the, yeah, most eastern side of the world here, and we have to, we have to do a lot of things to get this nation um, back on track to the modern age. Japan is really poor right now, and it is also reigned by the shogunate a very conservative and strict caste that is yeah well doubting or doubting everything that modernization will bring with them and we need to we need to overthrow them we also need to literate our uh, our population we need to educate them for the modernity and we also have a very very special mission here right now and that's the Terakoya system and the Tokugawa period has been marked by programs to assist with the education of the shogunate's population. Despite lacking an official state-run school system, the decentralized and private Terakoya or temple schools provide practical education to commoners across the country. And we have to go with a full mission here. Japanese investment level for education greater or equal than three. That is our main mission that we have right now. I just love how every nation in this game has a great theme, a great mission that it goes like the US has the the whole colonization of the of the West, right? And for us, we need to we need to breach modernity with education systems and yeah, basically also overthrowing the shogunate. So how can we do this? Well, we can have a look at the population of Japan right now at the beginning of the game. And what we can see right away is that most of the population is the lower strata. So that's 30 million people. And if you look a bit clo more closely, we can then also see that the aristocrats are the most powerful faction that we have here and with them, the shogunate. And we want to, we want to break this. We want to break the shogunate and we want to break the samurai. And the only thing we can do this really long-term wise is by lowering the group of aristocrats, getting in more capitalists and also getting more industrialized people, that is workmen and laborers instead of peasants. For interest groups, we can see there they are, the shogunate uh, themselves. Uh, they're a cloud of 46.5% and they're by far the strongest interest group that we have right now. Um, they also have Takashika Mori here, um, who is the leader. And he's got one thing about him, this leader, and that is that he's a strong endorser of the professional army. And this is actually one of the first laws that I would like to pursue here. The chance for this is really high because the samurai endorsed this one and also the shogunate. We don't have a professional army yet and it's a very important step to maintain our power with an army that is trained, 
that is not very likely to lose morale so quickly and that also gains a lot of experience points so this is actually one of the first actions that i'm doing i'm trying or i'm, I'm starting the process of enacting this new law so just for your information if you're completely new to victoria 3 um your whole economy your whole nation is basically of course divided into laws that we can rule here right now we have the peasant levies so right now most of my soldiers are coming from the peasantry that is very weak has low morale and is yeah well basically not very good it also gives the landowners that's the shogunate a very strong political strength and we want to break this as well with the professional army, the samurai get a bit more political strength. That's also not super ideal, but it is a first step to break the shogunate's power, which is the strongest power right now in my country. Next up, I would like to bolster an interest group that long-term wise is going to be my my most important friend, and that's the industrialists. It's very small right now. 1.1% of my whole political power is industrialist, and this is considered, they are considered marginalized because of that, and we want to we want to make them stronger. They are also getting automatically a bit stronger the more industry we'll have, but of course I can still, um, I can still try and, and bolster them, right? So we have the option here with a bit of my authority, we can use this to start bolstering them. Speaking about authority, that is one of my currencies kind of like that we have. Up here we can see this bureaucracy, authority, influence, convoys and money. All of them are important with of course money probably being one of the most important ones, but also my authority because with that we can do some certain actions that I would like to do. Let's use influence first because with influence I would like to have a great a greater look at the world map and before we unpause the game i would like to yeah, start some diplomatic relationships with the great Qing. so that's my biggest neighbor by far and it's also going to be a very strong opponent and i would like to begin relationships with them and this will cost me some of my influence 200 of that it is i would also with world power number one great britain start beginning improving my relationships so that we are always on good terms and even perhaps get some protections at some point from them this might be very beneficial for us that's already costing me 400 influence so we can still use some more uh, the other great power here is russia that we have up there and with russia it's a bit of a tricky beast because russia also has claim on my my territory right so we do have some territory still that we want to colonize and they have a direct claim on that land here too so improving my relationship with them well prolongs war a bit further into the distance there so i definitely don't want to have a war with them early on so that's at least some way of using my influence Another thing we should do, besides just marveling at the beauty or uh, detailed map that we see here with all the different beautiful cities of Japan, is technology. So we don't have any active research right now. And as Japan, we are really far behind. So we are really just up there on the tech tree. And we don't really start somewhere here in the middle like other nations, right? We are really starting all the way up here. Um, we do have some academia already research, so with that we could go for universities. Um, in the production tab, we do have manufacturers, so we can actually build some factories, that's great stuff. And we can build some farms, but beyond that, it's getting a bit tricky. So one of the first things that I would like to research, it's smaller research for now, it doesn't take very long, is for example empiricism that we could go with. Um, I could also go down here in the atmospheric engine, but it takes t twice as, t as much time. Or the cotton gin. Now, I'm going with the cotton gin for this one here for starters. This is actually an agricultural tech, um, but it boosts my agricultural output without building more plantations. I don't want to build more plantations because plantations directly contribute to my aristocratic faction, which is once again the shogunate. So I don't want to boost them further, right? The more plantations we have, the more power they have. And that means I don't want to build plantations. I want to reduce their strength. And I can do this by outputting more without building more plantations. At least that is my logic here. Um, that is actually one of the very important ones. And then it's also the atmospheric engine that we can queue in here already. Um, and with that, we can then boost the output of mines down the road. This is going to be my most important step. Now, before we go into the economy and the real interesting thing, I would like to do two more things. And that is the first one, taxes. And in taxes, we can we can do a couple of things now to really boost our um, income there. We don't have a very strong economy. We're only ranked 14 right now, prestige level-wise. And economy-wise, we're actually um, 8. That is not so bad, but, well, historically speaking, it's really weak right now. And that means we will not get that much out of taxes. Still, we can do this to boost our taxes um, as twice as high, right? So I'm going with the highest taxes right now. This will reduce my legitimacy. It will also increase radicals, 
but once again, of course, the attraction of interest groups in governments is also reduced, and that's the shogunate once more. So not only do I get more money in, but I'm also reducing the strength of the shogunate because people don't like them because they're the government right now, and they're increasing the taxes. Um, another thing is consumption taxes that I would like to introduce. We got uh, some 1,000 authority right now. Some of them we can use like services right away. They don't really have a downside to them. So for 200 authority, I can get the services taxed and this would bring me another 4,000 in right now. This of course grows with our economy. Um, and then perhaps a second tax for now that we could go with, for example, on liquor, right? So those two don't cost me that much, but bring me in quite a bit of money, almost 8,000. In addition, I would like to increase the government wages to the highest level because this gives me some authority again. An authority we want to use for some new edicts that I'm going to sign soon. And with the military, I'm actually going to lower the taxes a tiny bit. This now leaves me with 40,000 surplus and we have a gold reserve of 1.2 million. And it doesn't sound so bad, but it's going to be gone soon. Don't worry. <laughs> All right, finally for economy. Now that's that's the real tricky beast. Sorry, number two was actually reducing the strength of my uh, infantry. Uh, we have a lot of infantry right now that is pretty weak anyway, and we will not um, we will not survive any invasion or something like that. So I'm just going to reduce this to further increase my tax income. All right, so I'm going to probably put it down to 30 there right now, um, and that's that's fine for me. Q. Now we can finally move on to economy, and that's the real. The real deal, of course, that we want to pursue right now before I unpause the game. Um, first of all, before we go really into building more buildings, we need to start building the buildings that will build the buildings. And that is the construction sector, of course. The construction sector right now is very, very small. If I would start to build something now, really, it would take a long time. So my first action here is to increase the size of my construction sector. So we can see that we have in Chubu and in Kansai, that is kind of like my main province right now, we already have some industry or some construction sectors. So what I'm starting here right now is I'm going to boost them right away. So I'm going to double their output there. The other one is Kanto right over here that I would also like to get a construction sector up. And then also here in Shogoku and also up here in Tohoku. And with that, we are kind of like spreading the construction sectors throughout the country. And with that also then the resources they need to get something done. Um, let's just actually be fine with that for now. That's now, yeah, some six construction sectors that we're building up. Now I can finally unpause the game. Phew, nothing here that we need to worry about for the moment. At least now the game is running. And as we can see, things are happening right away. As we are starting January 60s, 1836. And with that, all the actions that we've taken so far, um, yeah, get into action. So they are going to work now. Also, the enactment of my law here, the professional army, starting with the introduction phase. In this case here, this is now being introduced to the other political factions, and we just need to wait it out. The uh, chance of success is rather high on this. Also, the improving of relationships with the different superpowers is now beginning to work for us. So it's in the background as well. Uh, we can also see my population is going to change a bit now. So we are at 31 million that we started with and we're now at 31 million zero three. So we are growing there a tiny bit at least um, with a very high unemployment rate of 100,000 that we want to tackle as well somehow. Yeah, one of the new additions is the night mode. So day and night cycle is activated. That's one of the DLCs. I think it's adding a nice flavor to the game as well. Shortly after unpausing, we do get another development here, the whaling industry. Whale oil is our past and will be our future. Soap, fuel for oil lamps, even the important lubrication of our machines. This polyvalent substance covers all of these needs. And if we want to trigger the event a dangerous business, which will lead to other events then, we need to fulfill those requirements. That is, any Japanese building has a whaling station and actually makes money out of that. So has a cash reserve greater than 25%. And any of the uh, Japanese characters has the admiral role and is not busy. So we do need to have an idle admiral and we do need to have a whaling station that is profitable. Now, do we already have a whaling station? Yeah, we do. We do have it in Kanto over here. That's two of them. And the cash reserve is greater than 25,000. So the requirement here would be actually fulfilled. Now we just need to make sure that it's greater than level three. So this is also something we can do. This is actually already happening thanks to the private 
business. Oh, and also here my, my law has passed the introduction phase, is now in the consideration phase. And let's increase the level of the whaling station so that it will reach number three. Another thing I would like to do, and that's now using my authority in the beginning stage, is for my most important countries that we have, or counties that we have, um, we want, or provinces, we want to start now enacting the social mobility. With this one here, we're increasing the education access by 25%, and we're also increasing the qualification access by 25%. Qualification basically means that pops living in these counties will um, more likely switch to another profession if it's required. Right, so without it, um, it would take just way longer. And we're definitely going ahead with Kyoto, that gets it right away. So Kansai, my capital state, where a lot of people are living. So that's 8 million out of my 30 million that are living just here. Right, I'm also going to do it for Chubu. That's another social mobility. That's another 100 authority. We basically can, could use it probably for all of my, my provinces, right? Edo also gets it, that's Kanto right over there with another 5 million that live in here and then also down here Shugoku with 3 million but it's not important here because of population but because of its natural resources and that's the logging camps that I definitely want to tackle here right and that is um, actually laborers you need here and we do have a lot of farmers here still so in that case we want to encourage people to then move over to these new uh, types of industries and we can do this with the social mobility. Yeah, law progressed to adoption, so the consideration was successful. We are already in the last phase of it, the adoption. No setbacks yet, a maximum of three setbacks would be allowed, and we have a chance of 58% still, so actually, yeah, this has a very high chance of getting enacted soon. I would also like to then, of course, move slowly but steadily towards the public schools. We have a few um, steps in the way of that. Public schools in the way here would be then also the empiricism that we need for it, because only with that we can then enact it. So I'm only going to put this one in my queue here of tech that we want to go with. And that's in the society tree right over here, where we're also just at the beginning really. Yeah, and while we wait for these things to progress, I just also have a love to have a look at the map itself. The game is very detailed and what you see here is actually real buildings that we have, right? So if we build something new, we would also then see it on the map. That's pretty cool and we're going to see this soon. Especially also then when we build some wonders and landmark buildings. And as we can see here also, there is quite a lot of construction going on. So we, it means that we're building something here. The whaling stations are actually being improved. And then also the construction sector. Now, speaking about construction sector, we have already finished some projects here. So from the six, we are down to only those two left. And with that, we also have increased our construction capacity to 19 now. And with that, I think it might be time soon now to start also constructing actual things. Now, construction in industry actually does require something. Uh, we're not constructing anything out of thin air. So we are consuming a lot of fabric and a lot of wood right now. And that's my go-to here. Let's have a look at the market. Because in the market we can see the balance of our goods that we have. And yeah, as expected, wood is actually on the lowest balance right now with a huge deficit. That also leads to an increase in price by 27%. And that's not good. That's also not good for us because we need to import that and we need to purchase it for that price, which, yeah, lowers my income there quite significantly. So what we want to do is we want to flood the market a bit with wood. And we do need a country or a province that has a lot of wood. And Shugoku here is one of them. It has up to 20 slots available for logging camps. It already is at level 6, so it should be rather easy to push this one. And yeah, let's push it. Let's actually push it by quite a bit double the output of that and as we can see they're making quite a, pro a bit of profit there with it they're also fully employed which is a great thing and with the new logging camps we're going to need more workers which in return the social mobility that we have enacted here will work rather quickly because people are more likely to switch to the laborers then and that's then our force that we have here more or less right that are growing now all right there is actually an event happening and Discord within the Intelligentsia. An influential faction within the Intelligentsia has grown frustrated with their co-members' neutrality on the topic of professional army. Themselves in favor of the law, they have now resolved to form a separate political faction on, uh, intent on passing it. Hmm. With their support, this shall actually pass. So we get another 15% enactment chance. The Intelligentsia gets a member flight. 
and that means they lose a group, a group pop attraction. That's not good. We actually want to keep them a bit. We could also say the Samurai extend an open hand. Oh, this would actually be even worse. <laughs> That's a negative 15%. Hmm. And the Samurai would grow. So let's actually go with the support. The bill shall pass. So we get another 15%. So the Intelligentsia lose anyway. We can't change that. We get the message here that wood is actually pretty expensive right now. And that we're stockpiling too much gold. Right. So what I can do here is I could actually switch to the iron frame buildings. Um, this will be very bad for my money right now. But we do have a lot of money. And I would like to use this. Uh, we can bolster or speed up our construction sector with that to 38. But we're consuming a lot of iron now. And that in return is expensive. Iron and tools. But we can afford it. So let's actually keep it there. And you know what? Let's actually also post the construction sector further by building another construction sector in each of the provinces where we already started with that. This is going to be expensive. And the next event comes right after popular playwright endorses reform. In the midst of the debate surrounding the professional army, one of the country's leading playwrights, strongly associated with the samurai, has staged a widely acclaimed play whose politically laden theme makes no se secret of the author's desire for the law to be passed. Uh, will be on everybody's lips. Another, yeah, flat out 10% chance. Uh, we could also bolster the samurais. And we could also let ensure the play gets wider international audience. And we get some 20 prestige with that. And this is not bad at all. Right? Because our prestige goes directly with our rank. And we already have a 70% chance of success. So we don't really need to have another 10% chance here. I'd rather go with prestige. That's more valuable to me. With more construction sectors finished. Yeah. We are going down here on the balance a bit. That's great. I want to actually get negative here soon, so we can use our gold reserves. And we're also building now the logging camps in Shugoku. And as we can see, the level is increasing. And the productivity and their output. Alright, another 15% chance. So we're at 85% chance now for the law. Now in order to get more wood out of this, we could change the work mode, the production method here to sawmills instead of the simple forestry. This would consume more tools, but would produce more wood. Sounds good, but tools is very expensive. So with that, we might actually make this industry negative. We can try it out. Um, no, even then it looks like we are profitable. Interesting, because the deficit for wood is so high. Even then we're making profit, even though we have to consume very expensive tools. Not a big deal to me, so we can actually keep it like that. What we can also do is in Shogoku right away, is since we're producing a lot of wood here, it might also make sense to process some of that into tools. And for that, we have the tooling workshop down here, and this consumes wood to make tools out of it. It is further increasing the employment rate of laborers and shopkeepers in the area and increases urbanization. Let's go ahead and yeah, go a level three tooling workshop right away. And there it is, we now have a professional army enacting the law was successful. And we do get now a number of bonuses here, right? So first of all, the Shogunate is actually losing strength. The Samurai gets bolstered a bit, but that's okay for me. And we can also now uh, mobilize additional 73 battalions for our army. Uh, they gain more experience points, lesser morale uh, losses, and a higher conscription rate. I'm happy, everybody's happy, except... Well, except the Shogunate, who is now losing a bit of strength here. Down to 42.9%. Ah, the colonization of Hokkaido has completed and the former colony is now proper state. That actually happened a bit passively up here in the north. There we have it now. And this is now incorporated into the Japanese Shogunate. And this is going to play a vital role to our economy. Because in Hokkaido, we have a lot of coal mines available. And we are going to need coal. Holy cow. Problem is right now, there's basically no one living in Hokkaido, right? It's 60,000 people. It is growing, of course, but that's it. Another thing I would like to do is, since we do still have some authority in Shugoku, where my main wood output is right now, I would like to bolster now also the resource industry. So we can encourage that by 100 in authority. We can push the throughput of um, the logging industry by 20%, which of course is super nice. Yeah, and also with uh, increasing the level of the logging camps in this area, what we can also see is now we're lacking a few 
a bit of a workforce here, right? So it's struggling to keep up with demand, the population, and that means we don't have enough workers right now to actually be profitable for this industry. Um, and in that case, we need to wait it. it. They should come in naturally, since we do also have the social mobility active. It shouldn't take that long. We're still building, though, construction. Yeah, we're still building one more logging camp. And after that, it can stabilize a bit. We could further... Hmm, let's check it out real quick. Wood is not looking so bad right now. It's not expensive, per se. We could change the, the production method of this again back to... Um, normal simple forestry this would reduce the wood output increase its price and also um, bolster its industry even though it, it would come at our cost most likely but actually i think i'm going to wait it out just a tiny bit we're also now building tool workshops then and then it should actually even out again all right one more thing the whaling industry we have checked now the whaling station that is level three and has a cash reserve greater than 25 percent um, and now we only need a an idle admiral. I think we don't have an admiral right now. Do we have one? We don't. We don't have a uh, fleet at all. So I can create a new fleet. Oh, and just on time, we've also finished the first research here, the cotton gin. And with that, my cotton plantations have a higher throughput passively. So I don't need to do anything else here. So there is now my Japanese first fleet. <laughs> Uh, it doesn't consist of any ships so far. Um, we can, however, now select an admiral. We do have the option of these three here. Once again, very important who we choose. The Shogunate, for example, definitely not, because that would make them stronger again if they have an admiral uh, in their in their in their crowd. We could take an Intelligentsia. This would actually boost them quite a bit. Or we could take a Samurai. Uh, he's honorable here. Fifty percent attraction of the interest group in the government. And this is actually inactive because he's not a leader. And the engineer is also inactive because he's no ruler. Then we would get a five construction bonus on top of it. Hmm, also not so bad. This would actually be active right away. He's reckless, so that's not good. And convoy raider, submarine offense, convoy raiding efficiency. These are things that are also not that great to me. So let's actually go with the intelligentsia and recruit this guy. And he's idle right now. With that, we have the whaling industry completed. Perfect. And a new event should start now. And there it is. A dangerous business. Event in Kanto. The efficiency of our whaling stations in Kanto has proved to have a dangerous counterpart and death has become common to almost every voyage. It is a high price to pay, but the profit is equally high. And with that, we can give Kanto a whaling boom. So 33% whaling station throughput for the next five years. It shines. And we're taking this one here because profit is really important right now and growth with that. Very good. So those whaling stations are really profitable right now and are having a nice throughput of, yeah, flesh and oil. Basically everything that we need. We are building some more construction sectors again to further or to speed up construction in general. We are negative now, finally. I say this with good caution, because that means we're investing now our gold into our economy, and I want to invest as much as possible. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this one. And we continue onwards with Japan in Victoria 3. In the next episode, I should say. Stay tuned. <laughs>